Hi everyone, I get a lot of comments in the comment section and also DMs over on Instagram from people wanting to know why I recommend specific skincare products when they've tried those skincare products out in the past and they haven't done anything for their skin whatsoever and they've seen no improvement. Well, I thought I would do a full video on that topic today eight reasons why your skincare might not be working for you. Let's get straight on with it. So if you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload new content on YouTube every single week. I would absolutely love it. If at some point in this video you are finding it helpful, please consider coming and joining the Pampered Wolf Pack by clicking on that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. So the first possible reason that your skincare isn't working for you is that you're not using it consistently in your routine. You're maybe swapping things out a little bit too frequently, or you're not using it often enough. Now, this doesn't really go for acid exfoliators because some people can use those every single day and some people every two weeks is good enough for them. We're talking about serums here. If you want to see the benefits of your serum, you need to be using them consistently on a daily basis and sometimes that means in the morning and also in the evening to be able to see those results quickly. And that brings me perfectly into reason number two why your skincare might not be working for you. It might actually be working for you but you may be being very impatient and have unrealistic expectations. And believe me this is a conversation that I have with my mom all the time because skincare is her friend. I mean you only have have to see how her skin has improved over a number of years to see that skincare is benefiting her skin greatly. However, if my mom takes a skincare product home and she hasn't seen dramatic benefits within the space of two weeks, she gets really disheartened and she shouldn't because you are never going to get dramatic results immediately from skincare. Skincare is not going to give you the same results as surgery, so you need to get that out of your head immediately. Reading the back of a pack, knowing your ingredients, so knowing what that skincare product can do for your skin, if you use it consistently and over months and some of them, years, it's really easy to get carried away and think, brilliant, if I start to use this product in two weeks time, all my wrinkles will have evaporated, my skin texture will have disappeared, I will have plump, firm skin, and I will probably look like Claudia Schiffer. It's not going to happen. And I think we go in a little overexcited sometimes, so inevitably end up getting very, very disappointed. Whereas if we take it down a little bit, you may be slightly more impressed. And like I said, it's very difficult to see those subtle changes that skincare can give your skin when you see your own reflection every single day of the week. It's much easier for others, if you bump into somebody on the street that you've not seen for six months, they may say, wow, you look really great, your skin looks amazing. Easier for them than it is for you when you see yourself every single day. So if you're wondering whether that skincare product is doing anything for your skin, make sure when you start using that skincare product, you take before pictures. Because I have been using devices and skincare products over time and thought they weren't doing anything for my skin before. But then when you take after pictures and compare them to the before pictures, they're considerably different. You just don't notice because you see yourself every single day. So to summarize, it's really important that you don't expect miracles, have realistic expectations, and be incredibly patient with your skincare. Slow and steady, you'll get there in the end. Reason number three, you're copying somebody else's skincare routine rather than devising a personalized skincare routine of your own. This is a big one. It's really easy if you don't know your skincare ingredients, if you don't know what those ingredients are going to do for your skin, copy somebody else's and just hope for the best. But the routine that you're copying might target dehydration and fine lines and wrinkles, which is all well and good if those two are your targets as well. You may see improvements in those areas, but you may also have other issues with your skin. You might have really sensitive skin, rosacea, hyperpigmentation, acne scarring, and all of those needs need to be addressed as well in order for you to get really good results. So just seeing results in a couple of different areas that may be brilliant for one person might not be great for you and will lead to disappointment in the long run. 
Reason number four, if you have an unhealthy lifestyle or you don't wear SPF on a daily basis when you're sat near a window or outside, you are completely sabotaging your skincare journey. And it doesn't matter if you spend thousands of pounds on skincare every single year, you are still not going to get the same results as somebody who has a healthy lifestyle and who does plaster themselves in SPF day in, day out. It's a bit like trying to push a car uphill on your own. It's slow, it's agonizing, and eventually you're gonna give up and start going backwards. And that's basically what it's like if you're creating damage on the skin constantly whilst you're trying to fix the damage at the same time. It's just completely and utterly counterintuitive. So there are a lot of things that can go in the pot of unhealthy lifestyle, not getting enough sleep, eating too much sugar, which can cause a lot of inflammation on the skin, breaking down the collagen that's already there, and also breaking down collagen production, smoking, which can cause a lot of free radical damage, drinking too much alcohol, which again can cause a lot of inflammation and collagen breakdown, not eating enough vitamins and minerals, which are key to good skin health. And there are other things that can hinder the efficacy of your skincare. One of them is hormone imbalances. Now, obviously hormone imbalances aren't a lifestyle choice. It's just life. But if you are of a certain age and you're experiencing hormone imbalances like me, my hormones are waving a white flag at the moment. I'm not a doctor, so I can't advise you which way to go either way. But I do recommend that you go and visit your doctor and get some advice. Because having a hormone imbalance can seriously affect your skin and therefore affect the results that you get from your skincare. Reason number five, you're not layering your products correctly. Now, as rule of thumb, it goes from the lightest all the way to the heaviest. So you would do mists, toners, essences, serums, light creams, heavier creams, oils, SPFs. That's the order that I would recommend. Now you can put oils before moisturizers depending on what your moisturizer is intended to do. So if you prefer a non-oily finish to your skin, apply your oil first. And if your moisturizer is solely to lock in that moisture and hydration rather than to add any more active ingredients to the mix, you can apply that over the top. If your moisturizer has active ingredients in that you want to work on your skin to improve your skin, I would put the moisturizer first and then the oil on last. So that is just my two penneth. Having said that, your skincare is going to get to where it needs to go. If you don't apply it in the correct order, however, you are hindering the absorption of those products. So it's going to take longer for your skincare to work and for you to see the results if you apply them in a different order. For order of application for serums, again, it's lightest to heaviest, but you also need to look at what the base of the serum is made from. So if it's water-based, put it on first. If it's oil-based, put it on last. If it's oil-based and you put it on first, you are going to hinder the water-based serums getting through that oil because oil penetrates water, but water doesn't penetrate oil. So just be careful which way you apply your serums if you have more than one in your routine. Reason number six is for those of you that said you've been using specific products and instead of your skin getting better, it's now looking worse. And not only that, it's started to sting, become irritated, become red and angry. Well, that's usually because you're using way too many actives in your routine at once, or you've gone in too aggressively with the strength of your actives. By doing this, you create a lot of damage and weakening to the skin barrier, and a weakened skin barrier can't hold on to hydration. So even if you spend hundreds of pounds pumping hydration into the skin, it's just going to disappear through the damage and evaporate into the air. So not only do you have a really irritated skin barrier, you also end up with dehydrated flaky skin as well, which makes your skin look worse than it did when you first started applying those active ingredients in the first place. My rule of thumb is no more than two actives in the morning and no more than two actives in the evening. I sometimes do three actives in the morning, but then only one active in the evening. But to do three actives for me in the morning, my skin needs to be in really good nick for me to be able to get away with doing that. And if if my skin ever told me that it was feeling irritated or a little angry, I would stop the actives altogether for a few days until my skin barrier had healed. Also, 
So higher strength actives aren't always going to be the best for your skin. I spent a long time on 0.025% tretinoin. I then went up to 0.05%, had great success on that. So I ended up going on 0.1% tretinoin and really didn't like it. My skin didn't like it. I was still getting the same results from my 0.05% tretinoin, but my skin just didn't look as nice. So I downgraded back down to the 0.05% and my skin is much, much happier for it. So don't always think that a higher strength active is better for your skin than slightly lower strength. Reason number seven that your skincare might not be working for you you're applying too much. If you apply too much of one product, your skin becomes saturated and then any other product that you apply on top of it doesn't have room to absorb because you've saturated your skin full of one ingredient. A lot of people apply way too much of one product. You only need a little amount, especially if you're layering products up. Another problem you may encounter if you're over applying your product or you're not allowing the first product to sink into the skin properly and dry down before you're applying the second product over the top is that the second product can't sink into the skin properly so it sits on the surface and if it's sitting on the surface it will dry on the surface. If product dries on the surface of your skin it's not getting to where it needs to go so it's not doing you any good whatsoever. It's a complete waste of money but also it's going to hinder you later on down the line during the makeup process when you apply your makeup over the top and the dried residue of the skincare just pills off with your brush or with your fingers or with the sponge and creates a big old mess. So if you are over applying your products, your products aren't getting to where they need to go and therefore you're not going to get the results that you really want. And reason eight, why your skincare might not be working for you and why you may not be getting the same results as everybody else. It's really simple, but it's so disappointing and disheartening. Everyone's skin is completely different. Some people are gonna get great results with a product, some people aren't, and some ingredients just don't suit people's skin. And I'm gonna take niacinamide here as a little example. Niacinamide is tolerated really well by the majority of people, but some people just can't use it. I'm also gonna choose vitamin C as another example because vitamin C is that superstar ingredient. It does pretty much everything. It's a great antioxidant so it will fight off that free radical damage which is great to use first thing in the morning. It also evens skin texture, evens out skin tone, increases collagen production, smooth skin, plump skin. It's just a lovely, lovely ingredient. Unfortunately, not everyone can tolerate it. The main person for me that can't tolerate it is me. I cannot use vitamin C products. They just aggravate my skin, they cause blemishes, they cause blackheads, and as soon as I realized that it was the vitamin C products causing those issues, I cut out vitamin C from my skincare routine, I found an alternative, and my skin thanked me for it. You know, not everyone can tolerate specific ingredients, not every ingredient is going to work for absolutely everybody. It's disheartening, but it's just the way it is. So that's it for my eight reasons why your skincare might not be working for you. I really hope you found this video helpful. Let me know what you've thought about it in the comment section. I've listed some similar videos that I think may be of interest to you over here. Why not check those out after you finish watching this video? Please don't forget to like and subscribe and hope to see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.